need to decompress a little bit. It's going to go, and as, as all things happen at TEDx, it is just putting it all together and that's your job. When we start thinking about change, we start thinking about our environment, we start thinking about how do we inspire different kinds of thinking? How do we inspire people to, to think in a sustainable way? Ernst van der Poel. Hi, my name is Ernst. I'm a diving instructor, and I'd like to talk to you about the vital importance of reconnecting youth to nature. I'd like to start my story by talking a little bit about the guys behind there. This picture was taken in the Sea du Soleil. As you can see, they're all balancing on top of each other. Okay, sea turtles are amazing creatures. A couple of interesting things about sea turtles. They have been known to dive down to more than 500 meters to find jellyfish to eat them. They can hold their breath for up to five hours, slowing their heartbeats down to about one beat every nine minutes. Mine's beating about 300 beats at the moment. The interesting thing about these sea turtles, the, most thing, the thing that amazes me the most is the vast distances that these turtles can actually travel in one lifetime. But the key thing that is the most mind-blowing is the fact that the female species always seem to make her way back to her ancestral beach, the beach that she was born in, to lay her eggs. Now these little sea turtles, from the moment they get born, they've got a little clock inside their body that guides them down towards the ocean. And they're wrestling their way down towards the beach. And how do they do that? Inside their bodies, they've got a natural compass that guides them towards the water. And they use the natural reflection of the moon shining onto the water to guide them back. Unfortunately, there's about eight different species of sea turtles, and they're all in the endangered species list. And the reason for this is, as coastal development moves closer down towards the areas where they nest, these little sea turtles get confused by the artificial lights, and they make their way to streets and parking lots, where they will then eventually die of exposure. Now, there's a little story that we can read. The same connection that these sea turtles have with the ocean Dubai had as well. Dubai, the Dubai that we see today is a city that got inspired by the sea. As you can see from the photo over there, the city started right on the water's edge. The people of Dubai, they were fishermen, spending time out there catching fish to feed their families. They were seafarers, they were pearl divers that navigated their way across the ocean using only the stars to guide them. As little as one generation later, this has changed. Very few connections are left for young people to actually interact with nature. Very similar, okay, the young people have moved away. Just like the sea turtles are being misguided and moving away uh, from the artificial, from the natural light actually shining, they're actually moving to the parking lots. The young people also are being, the, the communication diverted by uh, what's happening in cities nowadays. Now I'd like to bring your attention to the two quotes behind me especially the one at the bottom. I was taken from a fourth grader. He said, my favorite place to play is indoors because that's where all the electrical outlets are. When you look at the top quote by Walt Whitman, I'd like to share a story of you when I grew up. I grew up in a tiny little town in Port Edward. My very first memory at school was going down across the beach, which is probably about as far as you guys are sitting from me. And I went snorkeling with my friends in these rock pools and I was amazed to how much life was into a little area about as big as the stage. But one of the memories that's the most vivid etched in my mind is of a big whale that came into the bay in front of the school and she gave birth to her baby. What ended up happening is these dolphins came and they made a huge circle around this whale. And it was the most fascinating thing to see that every morning we'd get to school early just to be able to see what's happened with the calf and the dolphin. And this is one of memory many memories that connected me to nature. Now, when we have a look at the opportunities that we actually have in Dubai, okay, as a diving educator and a person that's actually lived here for about 11 years, I want to take, I want to make a connection and create a way for young people to be able to reconnect to nature. And I founded a project called Te Wassel in 2002 and to do exactly that, to reconnect young people to nature. One of the flagship projects that we have 
and Tawassel as a called an Adopt a Reef project. And the whole aim of the Adopt a Reef project is to create an attachment with young people to nature. Without this attachment, young people will not be able to benefit from connecting to nature, being able to be passionate about nature. We use Adopt a Reef by getting children to adopt a reef and not diving it once or twice but maybe four or five, ti five times. I teach them how to survey the reef. It's amazing to see as the kids start diving on the, re on the reef, the first time they're just looking at the reef but then after a while they start seeing things. Little fish becomes communities. Okay? They start noticing the clownfish and the grouper. Even more exciting than that is one of our future projects that we're actually going to be bringing up and it's a, re a restoration project where we're looking at the coastal area along the Dubai coastline to introduce something called restoration ecology. And we're working very closely with children in the community as well as coastal engineers to create an eco-engineered reef bombing. Now really what this is, as we did a little bit of research and we found out daily in Dubai there's about 30 tons of construction waste. So what we're looking at doing is getting bright-minded young people alike because you find ways to use construction waste to actually create these big coral heads. And we get the kids involved right from the start, from the design phases, drawing on the paper. I want to create a habitat for hamur or turtle. And then together we build the reef and eventually we get the kids to dive and survey the reef. As important a connection, as a, important a connection is in nature, we also believe there should be an attachment in community. And so Wassel does this by getting children and young people involved with local NGOs and charities within the local community. One such an example is some of the work that we did with the PC PCRF. We had a couple of kids. These are kids that uh, lost a limb or part of a limb in the conflict between Israel and Palestine, and we took them diving. This young man made a big impact. I've got a soft spot in my heart for him. His name is Anas. He lost his eye and his leg about six months before this photo was taken. And you can imagine what a kid must go through that was once running up and down and playing. So seeing these kids in the water, unassisted by crutches and being able to move freely is something that I can't describe in words. I'd like to take you through some slides of a typical Tawassal journey. This was about a week ago and we actually took these kids um, out on one of these big Arabian dows down to the Musan Dam. These photos were actually taken by one of the kids. And really all it is is us leaving quarter past five in the morning and I, the whole day, I'm setting the stage for these children, okay? It's like, it's, it's almost like a play. And as we go along, you can feel the excitement building. It's dramatic blue seas, mountains meeting the place and it's just really brilliant to see the kids out of the city. They're putting their kit together before the time we do briefings. Uh, some of the key things that we're doing is identifying key indicating organisms like some fish species and stuff that are typically found in the Gulf. And then what I'm trying to do is telling the kids the whole time, remember, don't just look at things, see things. Now, very often once they're under the water, they see small things like a clownfish or maybe a shrimp. But now and again, you get an amazing experience of diving with one of these big guys. Now, this is the biggest fish in the ocean. It's called a whale shark. And being able to see one of these things, your heart beats really fast when you do see them. And... I asked the kids, how do you feel about this? And uh, the one kid, the, the, the quote that comes to mind, he said, Ernst, when I looked at the spots on this whale shark, it looked like the fingerprints of God. And this was a photo that was actually taken by this child. There's also time for uh, fun and games in between. But on the way back, we give the children a chance to actually reflect on the day. They log their dive, they identify the fish, they share something that inspired them, and we discuss it in a group. And then what we do is we get the kids just to enjoy nature. And at one point in time, I just get everybody to keep quiet, find a nice quiet place on the boat, and just meditate on the day. Obviously, you can see uh, these young men took it a step further. <laughs> yeah. Uh, on this particular day, we came back into the harbor, and there's a giant guitar shark that actually lied of, uh, that got caught in nets. And it was fascinating to see the children's reaction to this. Because uh, you can tell them about shark finning, you can tell them about what happens to sharks in nature, but for them to actually see something that they saw alive, swimming around, making an impact on them, and then seeing it lifeless on a slab, ready to be shipped out to China, to be chopped into pieces for its fins, really made an impact on them. And they were really grilling the fishermen. I'd like to summarize. 
Knowledge of nature is very important, but passion is going to be the long distance fuel in our struggle to conserve natural heritage. Now, passion is not something that's delivered in a classroom. It's not something that you read in a book or see on television. Passion, passion is something that is lifted from nature. Passion is in the fingerprint patterns, the godlike fingerprint patterns on a whale shark. Passion is what you find in the rock pools that you go snorkeling as a child. Passion is in the dolphins circling around the whale. It's in the baby turtles wrestling their way down towards the beach. And I'd like to implore each and every one of you guys, find that connection that you had as a child with nature. Look inside yourself. And if you don't have that connection or you can't find it, okay, it's not too late to connect to nature. Thank you very much. Thank you. Fantastic.